Hey, have you ever felt like you didn't know where you belonged? In today's video, I want to share with you my story of my cultural identity crisis. How I found out I had a cultural identity crisis was when I moved to the US, people would ask me, where are you from? That seems like an easy enough question, but back then I was learning to speak English and it was very difficult for me to explain my whole situation as an immigrant in the United States. See, what happened is I was born in Costa Rica. Then when I was nine, I moved to Nicaragua with my mom, which is where she's from and most of my family. And then when I was 12, right before I turned 13, I actually moved to the US. Where are you from used to be a very easy question to answer because when I moved to Nicaragua, well, I was a Costa Rican girl. I had an accent, people immediately knew that I was from Costa Rica. But when I moved to the US, I didn't have the language, like literally didn't have the words to quickly explain, well, I was born in Costa Rica, but I just lived in Nicaragua, so I actually moved from Nicaragua, but I'm from Costa Rica. Or, well, I was born in Costa Rica, but my family's from Nicaragua, and I was just living there with my mom. So, I'm from both places, like I literally didn't have a way to explain myself. It almost felt like whatever answer I picked, even if it was just more easy to say a one-word answer, it was like betraying myself somehow. If I said, oh, I'm from Costa Rica, well, I was just a race in the last three years of my life, and also my family's origin. And if I said, well, I'm from Nicaragua, well, that actually felt like a lie at the time because I had always been the girl from Costa Rica, and I was born there, so. And what started to happen is that the more I answered this question in a way that was not satisfactory to me, the more and more I wondered, where exactly am I from? And to add to the confusion, I kind of felt the same way about language, like which language do I speak? If you're bilingual, you will know that you actually start to think in both languages the more and more you get to be fluent in a second or third, fourth language. Somehow it all mixes up in your brain. So the more and more confusion I felt because where am I actually from? And as the years went by, then I started to acquire the US culture. And then I felt like if I were to go back to Costa Rica, they probably think I'm a gringa, which is the Spanish word for like American. And to be honest, I wouldn't have an answer to that question for a very long time. How I actually figured out how to answer that question to myself took me a very long time. And it was actually a pure coincidence. When I was in sophomore year of college, I actually had a class that was Latin American history. The professor told us for your final paper, you get to write about whatever you want. I just want you to write 10 to 12 pages on whatever topic you choose that is related to Latin America. And by pure coincidence, one day I walked into the language lab and there was an article sitting at the front desk of the language lab, but the title of the news article read something like national identity of Nicaraguan children in Costa Rica. And of course the title jumped at me immediately and I asked the lady at the front desk, is this anybody's article? And she said, no, I have no idea who it is. If you want it, you can take it. The article turned out to be about children that are born to Nicaraguan mothers who live in Costa Rica and how much they struggled with their national identity. And I guess I should give some context. On an ethnic national level, Costa Rica and Nicaragua are pretty much like enemies. So it's no surprise that this article was mentioning that children that were born to Nicaraguan mothers in Costa Rica suffered a lot of discrimination, a lot of bullying. They were talked down by their peers in Costa Rica. But the children felt very conflicted on the inside because they had never actually been to Nicaragua. They were born in Costa Rica, they grew up in Costa Rica, and there was no reason why 
they would ever feel like they are from Nicaragua. And oddly enough, I actually saw a little bit of myself in this article because when I was in Costa Rica, I remember the kids in school or in the neighborhood every once in a while telling me, why do you talk funny? And at the time, I really didn't understand what they were talking about. But looking back, it probably had to do with the fact that I have a mixed accent. Of course, if I grew up with a Nicaraguan mom, I'm going to take some slang or just a few ways of speaking that are very much like a Nicaraguan person. But at the same time, I am going to be acquiring ways of speaking like a Costa Rican from my neighborhood, from my school, and even from my mom who did her best to assimilate. So long story short, I decided to write my history paper on that topic. And the more and more I researched, the more and more I began to learn there are many kids like me around the world. And that's how I learned of this concept called third culture kid. A third culture kid is a kid that has a unique cultural experience and identity because they have experienced many different cultures as they're growing up. And that can actually also happen if you're an adult. So it doesn't just apply to kids. I think that's just how they start to figure out that this phenomenon was happening. And where they first encountered third culture kids was actually kids of military families. Military families tend to move around a lot and often from one country to another. So sociologists started to notice the children of military families and their identity was unique because they took elements from different cultures due to their own experiences and a brother and a sister from the same family could easily have completely different cultural identities and experiences. Needless to say, when I began to read all about these cultural phenomenons, my own cultural identity began to make sense. I don't have any loyalty to my country of origin or the countries that I have lived in. I have loyalty to all. I feel like I'm just as Costa Rican as I am Nicaraguan, as I am now from the US. So of course, like the nerd that I am, I loved doing this assignment. And again, I feel like it's almost by pure coincidence that I stumbled upon all of these concepts, which would actually really shape the way that I see myself and help me empower myself when it comes to understanding just who I am and my experiences in life. I feel like people underestimate how much your cultural or ethnic experience shapes who you are and it makes sense why there are so many programs of ethnic studies and why the students that learn about their own culture feel so empowered because it gives you a sense of who you are it gives you power and that's why it really actually bothers me when people are like why can that immigrant just assimilate why do they have to celebrate their culture why can they just forget about their country, they're now in the U.S., why can't you celebrate the U.S.? Well, it would be very difficult for you if you were to suddenly move to a new country to just completely forget about who you are or what you experience, uh, the things that you do at home, the cultural practices that you have lived with, and then adopt new ones 100%. That would probably actually be more disempowering than anything else because it's very important to know who you are and to celebrate who you are and to be at peace with all the different aspects of who you are as a human being. Now, it wasn't actually until my very last day of doing research for this paper that I really felt like I had an answer to the famous question, where are you from? But as I was doing research for this paper, I went to the library and I was just randomly reading like, you know, all the titles. I was going to Ithaca College and when you're a language major at Ithaca College, you have to take an additional language. So at the time I was taking Italian. And so I'm at this library and I'm reading, you know, all the titles on the shelf. And all of a sudden 
I jumps at me this Italian book titled, and I'm sorry if I'm gonna butcher this phrase because it's been a very long time since I had Italian, but the title of the book said, La mia casa sono dove sono felice. And you know when you have that moment, have you ever started to learn a, another language? And you have that first moment where you're able to read the language and like immediately translate it in your head like you understood immediately, you didn't have to like think about it. I had that moment with when I read this phrase, like I immediately knew what it meant. My home is where I'm happy. And when I read that phrase, like my whole entire life made sense. I don't have to define a home as like some physical space. And I also don't have to define my ethnicity or my culture as some like specific label that has like precise boundaries, precise like anything. I feel like I am from nowhere and everywhere all at once. And I'm finally at peace with that. And I no longer feel like I don't know where I belong. Because like I said, I feel like I belong everywhere and nowhere at once. And if anything, I feel more like I would like to think of myself as a citizen of the world. The reason I wanted to share this topic with you is because there's a big chance that you might feel a similar way. It's not just immigrants like me or children of military that feel this way. If you can imagine everyone in the world that has moved around, even if it's just from state to state or from city to city, you're also gathering little bits of culture and language from many different places and experiencing the world in a unique way. But unfortunately, there's a big chance that if you have grown up this way, that maybe you don't know where you belong or you feel like you don't know where you belong. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about my weird cultural identity and <laughs> the crisis I went to in the hopes that maybe it inspires you to look into your own identity. The same could be happening with you and your own family or your own experiences of life. And so I just wanted to share these concepts with you in a quick video today because I feel like it's really important to know yourself and I didn't know how disempowering it was not to know how to understand my culture, my sense of identity culture, until I figured it out. I kind of actually worked it out backwards. I figured out my cultural identity, and then that's when I realized that I had a cultural identity crisis to begin with. <laughs> forgot about the giveaway <laughs> click two youtube comments for my last video and you will get two paintings okay so it's like a virtual random comment picker start raffle and pick a random winner okay and the first winner is tjb he left, he left a message great video thank you tjb okay okay pick another winner and the next winner is Ruiast Rui Peter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Ruiast Rui Yast Peter. That's awesome. Keep it up. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Like I said in my last video, I'm going to figure out how to get in contact with you so that I can have these shipped to you. So that's really all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for watching. If you still are, subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this whole mixed cultural identity. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.